What's up everybody? Today I'm going to show you how to go from this grainy image to this shiny one. Let's dive into it. Click the subscribe button and enable the notification with the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. So in today's tutorial I'm gonna talk to you about a technique to remove noise from an image in Photoshop without using any external plugins. Now this is not a brand new technique. I came across this technique seven years ago when I was learning about Photoshop and it's a technique using image processing. I have wrote an article about this technique where I put some links to the math behind it. I'll leave a link to that article in the description down below. Make sure to go read and follow those links if you are into the math. Um, for this specific tutorial I'm just gonna stay focused on Lightroom and Photoshop and the steps we need to follow to apply uh, this technique. So the first thing here is I have these 12 shots and these are as you can see here exactly the same shot, camera was on a tripod, same exposure. Now the important bit here is that 25,600 ISO, this is the source of a lot of noise and if I go one to one size you can clearly see despite the compression that YouTube applied to videos you can clearly see um, the, the, the grain. This image is extremely grainy. So let's see how we can get rid of this noise. Let's go back to the library and uh, let's select all the images, all the 12 shots. Then I'm gonna go into the develop mode and what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna use Lightroom to lay down the foundation of the image, the mood, the colors, the contrast and all that stuff. And then I'm gonna bring these layers into Photoshop and I'm gonna apply the median filter. This is the filter that will allow us to get rid of the majority of the noise. So first thing first, I'm gonna apply a faithful camera profile to all the images. Uh, by the way, I have all these images selected and because AutoSync, as you can see here, is uh, switched on, then any adjustment I apply to this image is gonna be applied to all the other images. So this is important. Um, the second thing is the white balance. Now I've done white balance in camera. If you want to know how to do that leave a comment down below and I will make sure to cover that topic with the tutorial. For this one we're going to skip it and we're going to focus on all the other bits and pieces. Now I'm going to keep an eye on the histogram here but I'm mainly going to focus on the image and what it looks like. Playing around with the highlights and just going up and down I want to see how this image is going to be affected playing around with the highlights. I think I'm not going to touch them now. I'm going to darken a little bit the shadows. What I want is a really contrasty image, it's a really dark image and I want the red ring and the text to stand out. So I'm going to probably bring down a little bit the shadows and I go back and forth because I want to see how this is affecting the image. Uh, right now I think I like the shadows here. Then white, hitting halt I can see the limits so this is already blowing out the highlights in uh, the Canon lens text so I'll back off a little bit and probably I'll back off the highlights until these disappear and now I can push a little bit the whites. Now because this text is white and there is no much um, details inside it I don't really care it's also small text so I don't really care if you know I blow out a little bit the highlights there because I lose details but there are no many details to preserve. For the blacks I'm gonna probably drag it like so because I really like strong vignetting effect focusing on this part of the lens and then the, the branding and the red ring. Now there is this new slider in the latest edition of Lightroom which is texture and as you can see this is affecting the image quite nicely and it's making this texture in the metal of the lens popping out. Clarity, so clarity is also adding some uh, uh, brightness to the image. Now I'm not really sure I want that. So for now I'll probably bump clarity like five points and I will leave it there. Vibrance and saturation. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bump up the vibrance. And as you can see this red ring is standing out a lot now but there are other colors. There are some green and some purple that are standing out and I wanna get rid of them. 
I will do that in a second. And then the last thing I want to do here is add a little bit of contrast. As you can see, the more I add contrast, the more I get into the mood I want. But as I increase contrast, uh, I automatically increase saturation. So I need to back off on that. Uh, for now, this is too much. So I'm probably going to go here. And I'm going to back off like 5, 10 points on saturation. Something like 3 points is fine. Right, now, HSL color tab. This is where I'm going to do all the tricks. I want the red ring to stand out. And I'm going to pick this adjustment picker. I'm going to select and click on the red. And I'm going to drag up and down to see which colors are affected. As you can see, red and a little bit of orange are the main component, well, actually the only component of this red ring. So what I'm going to do is probably I'm going to back off yellow. It does have some impact and uh, I'm going to make it 100% so you can see that it's clearly in the lens and a little bit here. So I definitely want to get rid of that yellow. So I'm going to desaturate the yellow quite a bit. Then the greens. This is not so much green, but just going to back off to uh, weaken the greens in the image. Aqua is like the green. There is not so much, but I'm just play safe and uh, desaturating this. Then blue, here is where we have more colors. So the blue is in the lens and I'm going to desaturate a little bit. But I don't want this look. I don't want the total black and white look. I want to just have a tint there, something like that. Purple, again, in the lens element. I'm going to pick it off a little bit more. And then we have this magenta, which is not super present. So safe side, I'm going to pick it off. And now we can bump up. Um, I'm going to play with the saturation a little bit more. So I'm going to desaturate a few points less. And then, and then now I can play with red ring. So I really want the red ring to stand out. So I'm going to bump the saturation for the red. And as you can see, this is really helping a lot. The same for the orange. That should be fine. Now, details, I'm not going to touch this one for now. Uh, sharpening, I'm going to make sure that clicking on Alt and dragging masking slider, that I'm going to sharpen only the edges. Now, because it's so grainy, this image, it's going to sharpen some grain of noise anyway. Uh, but I'll try my best and I'll keep it as much as possible away from the grain in noise. And I think this is fine. So this is right now sharpening some edges of the lens, at least the one toward the camera and uh, the text. That's good enough. Noise reduction, I'm not going to touch it. Remove chromatic aberration. And uh, now I'm going to add a very strong vignette because I want to see how this is impacting the image. And I like it like so and then I will let some highlights through and the midpoint I think I like it like that because you can really focus on the text now obviously this is too much the amount is too much so I'm gonna back off and then add something like 20 minus 20 in vignetting amount and now there is one last bit I want to do. So this bottom part of the lens, this is the rubber focus ring. I'm going to get rid of it. Or at least I want to darken it a little bit. So I'll get the adjustment brush. And then I will reset everything. And I will set the exposure to something extreme, like minus 4. Uh, big brush. And 70% uh, feather is good enough. And then I'm just going to gently brush on this side now obviously this is too much so i'm gonna reset the exposure and then i'm gonna drag it down just maybe one stop i'm gonna bump up the highlights because i really want these parts these gears uh standing out 
and this is really a give and take game so I'm gonna back off on the shadows a little bit and maybe the blacks and then bump up the highlights and I think I like it like that right so now that we have the image where we want I'm just with all the images selected right click edit open as layers in Photoshop and this will take a while Photoshop will do its things and it will start to load all the layers in one Photoshop documents all right here we are in Photoshop and as you can see Photoshop loaded all 12 images in the same document and uh, we can quickly go through them and you can see there is really no changes camera was on the tripod and this is exactly the same exposure so there might be some flickering in terms of exposure because I wasn't using artificial light but I was using for this specific photo shoot um, a natural light so there might have been some flickering in the light uh, clouds and things like that but overall the image is exactly the same but it's 12 different exposures uh, and this is important because where it makes a difference and let me zoom in and give you an example where it makes a difference is you can see now the noise in every image is in different positions and this is the key for the median filter to work and be able to remove noise so how does it work um, first of all I select the first top layer and then shift the bottom layer so this will select all the layers in between and I'm gonna do edit auto align layers now I don't really need to do this because the camera was on a tripod but uh, because of the shutter opening and closing and some other you know things out of control there might have been some movements micro movement so I'm just gonna make sure that I get rid of those by um, aligning all the layers so I leave everything as is and then I click on OK and I let Photoshop do its things. All right, and Photoshop is done. So all the layers are aligned to each other. And you can notice that there is, let me zoom in, there is some gap. Now, this is probably one, two pixel gap. I can zoom in like 300% to be, to make it very visible. And this is like 800% zooming in. So it's really, you can see this is two pixel. Now, the reason. Um, the reason for this gap to be there is because the auto alignment is moving images and rotating them in order to align the content with the content in other other layers so I want to get rid of that so I'm in just gonna uh, pick the crop tool and then maybe I'm gonna crop it like something like that so I'm gonna hit return and this is gonna submit this cropping framing I'm going to exit from the crop tool with the 12 layers selected. I'm going to right click next to one of them and I'm going to select convert to smart object. Now this is going to create a stack of 12 images and this is what we're going to use to apply the median filter. Right. And we are almost there. Now before I apply the median filter, I want to create a snapshot of this image so I can compare the before and after media filter. To do that, I'm going to duplicate this layer, Command J, and then right click on the copy and uh, I'm going to rasterize the layer. Now I'm going to click, I'm going to double click on the name of the original layer and call it original. And then I'm going to rename the smart object stacked layers. Going to hide for a second the original, select the stack layer and then in layer, smart objects, stack modes. As you can see here, there is a number of filters you can apply. The one we care about today is medium. So clicking on that, let Photoshop doing its calculations and there you have it. Let me zoom in 100% and then focus on the glass element, which is the part uh, with most noise and uh, you can see this is the original you look how much grain there is and this is with the medium filter applied this is the before and this is the after thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe hit the bell icon to stay notified with new uploads and leave a comment down below if you have any question see you next time